Hi, I'm Lisa. I live in the beautiful New Zealand. This is Back to Bread, Back to Jesus. I want to share my encounters with God so you can also walk with the presence of Jesus every day. I have prophetic giftings and my heart is for you to encounter God and experience breakthrough in your life through these videos. I feel called to speak life and bring people to the foot of the cross. So welcome to Back to Bread. Hey guys, welcome to Back to Bread. This is my third video uh, about my adventures in Israel. So I hope you enjoy this and it blesses you. This is called He is Risen. On the plane heading to Dubai from Auckland, my son was seated to my left, Catherine to the left of him and my mum to my right. My son and I were two in the middle row of four seats in the centre of a big 737 aircraft. Mid-flight and the lights were off, I was looking around at the little lights that were lighting up the cabin like stars and the flight attendants were heading our way with another round of drinks and food. I ordered a hot coffee because it was hopeless trying to keep asleep when it was daytime back in New Zealand. I placed the coffee on my tray table and my son Dakota managed to knock it off and onto his legs. I quickly grabbed what I had to wipe it off his bare legs as fast as I could. He was wearing shorts. Knowing we were stuck where we were and hot coffee was going to burn, I looked at Dakota as he sat there shocked with the coffee running down his legs. I grabbed my neck cushion and soaked up most of it. That was the end of my neck cushion for the rest of our flights to Israel. I looked at Dakota again and asked why he wasn't helping me to clean it up. He looked, at ba he looked back at me and still didn't have words for me. I checked his legs and they weren't even warm, let alone hot. Dakota turned and said, I was waiting for it to hurt. I turned to my mum and she said in surprise, that was a miracle. I immediately said, thank you God. That was the start of many miracles God was about to do on our trip to the Holy Land. The next day and only a few hours after landing in Tel Aviv, we were in the old city of Jerusalem and walking the streets, checking out the markets just down the street from our hotel. We ended up praying for people who we met in the markets and then a lady across, from the, across the street from our hotel as I was praying, praying for a lady, I felt a hand rest on my shoulder. I turned to see it was my son's hand and he was joining in, praying for this lady, something he had never done before. Before this moment, he had never even seen me pray for people in the street and didn't see me pray for people at church. He only heard about it when I sometimes told him what awesome things God did each week at a Friday service I go to. That day, he even started evangelizing with the two ladies we were with, Catherine and Eve and my mum, all three of them, are evangelists and love to preach the gospel. They recruited my son so fast I couldn't believe it, in part because he was willing to get involved when he had never done it before, and because I'd never seen him want to share Jesus with people before. I should have known he would be a potential evangelist with my mum as his nana. She is always talking about Jesus and the Bible. The amazing thing I saw God do on top of this was that a refund come came through from the tour company we were about to go on tour with in a few days and they said they wanted to bless us with a hundred dollars each. I knew what this meant immediately. First fruits in Israel and a reward for my son for working for the kingdom. I know God is a rewarder and it blew my mind that the first day my son put his hands to the plough he was paid for it. 100 shekels, my son's first paid job and it was for the Lord. It still gets me when I think about it now. I saw God do a quick work in my son and give him a reward all in the first day there, in the first few hours even of being there. The next day we went out to the markets in the old city again and visited the Western Wall. We were just heading back to our hotel room when I had a look on my phone and the time was 2.22 p.m. A song was on repeat in my head. Holy Spirit often speaks to me through songs, especially they, if they are repeated like this. The Hillsong lyrics, which online says the words and music are by Brooke Liggettwood, are Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud. There is a sound that changes things, the sound of his people on their knees. I wake up you slumbering, it's time to worship him. And when he moves and when we pray, where stood a wall now stands away where every promise is amen, and when he moves, make no mistake, the bells of hell begin to shake, all hail the Lord, all hail the King, oh let the King of glory enter in. 
as we were walking through a lounge area in the hotel, I turned to see my son handing out a little pamphlet with the gospel message in it to a man who was staying there as well. He said thank you to Dakota and the smile on my son's face was something special. He knew he was giving someone life in that little pamphlet, sharing the message of Jesus and the life we have because he died and was resurrected to give us eternal life when we ask for forgiveness of our sins. We get a new life because of Jesus and as I watched my son hand the pamphlets out, it was just like the song, God was moving. The next day was Thursday and we walked down to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is a church in the Christian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem, just a few hundred metres from where we were staying. We followed the little path through the markets and walked on the beaming white stones in the scorching sunshine. We walked upstairs to where they have a replica cross and Holy Spirit whispered to me saying, On this rock I will build my church. Then we walked down the wooden steps to the ground floor where they have a slab of reddish stone called the Stone of Anointing. They say this is where Jesus' body was laid and cleaned after he had died, being prepared for burial in the tomb. I knelt on the concrete floor, struggling with my body as the arthritis in my knees and ankles had swollen up and I could barely get down, knowing I would struggle to get up as well. But I knew I needed to do it. I could feel the Lord wanted to speak to me. I placed my hands flat on the stone and I felt the presence of Jesus flood all around me and it was like the whole world stopped. I could no longer hear anything around me. The hundreds of people visiting this place were suddenly silent. I shut my eyes and I heard the words of Jesus speak to my heart. He said, my body bruised for you. My body bruised for you, Lisa. So the world would come to know me. My body broken for them and their iniquities. This completely wrecked me. And it still wrecks me now. And I believe that in that moment, I received the seed of faith and a knowledge of Jesus dying for me. For the healing of my body from arthritis and everything else. In those words I understood and truly believed that it was Jesus' body bruised and broken for me. Later that day, after visiting the Yavashem Holocaust Museum, we were in a taxi van and the Lord reminded us of a scripture from Genesis 2 verse 7 where God breathed the breath of life into man. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. We'd just been to a place remembering so much death and God was speaking about going from death to life because of Jesus, of resurrection power. We sung a song called Mighty to Save by Hillsong Worship. And the lyrics say, Saviour, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. We sung another song called Revelation Song by Carrie Joby. The lyrics say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. The next day we travelled all over the place, including to the Jordan River, where we were all baptised, where John the Baptist has, had baptised Jesus. We went to Jericho, to Hersham's palace, to the Zacchaeus tree and the Mount of Temptation viewing point. We got back to our hotel that afternoon and my son said he wanted to give the guy downstairs at the restaurant a prophetic word. This is the same guy who runs the juice bar there. He had never heard the Holy Spirit, this is my son, or the voice of God before, and so I spent about 15 minutes giving Dakota a quick rundown of what it could be like. I told him that he might see a vision, he might hear a scripture, he might get a specific word as well. I said that in general, a prophetic word should be encouraging, uplifting, and challenging. After I'd finished speaking with him and making sure he understood what we'd talked about, we went down one floor of the hotel to a little area with a few chairs. He turned to me, my mum and the other ladies and said, I've got a word for Jacob. He said he had a word, two scriptures and he'd seen a vision. 
My mum turned to him and said, wow, I'm so jealous, and laughed. None of us could quite believe it. I have never seen God do a quick work like he'd done in my son, and we'd only been in Israel for three nights. I knew God was doing quick works, but especially I believe he is doing quick works right now in our young people. The next morning, Dakota went down to see Jacob, who was making juices at a fruit stall up at the entrance to the little lane the hotel was on, and gave him the word he had received. <clears throat> it was special to see how God had moved in the four days we'd been in Israel so far. From the moment, ja from the moment we arrived, Jacob had given me a word, and now to see my son return the gift by giving him one. A few days later, we were visiting the shores of the Sea of Galilee at Peter's fishing spot. It's on the Tagbar beach at the Church of the Primacy of St. Peter. It was so hot that I had to get my feet in the water and it was glorious to feel the water crashing against my ankles. I felt Holy Spirit say, look down, and as I did, I saw a little stone by my feet. I bent down to pick it up <clears throat> and it had a little heart shape in the middle of it. I still have this stone and every time I look at it, I am reminded how Jesus gives us beautiful gifts to show us how much he loves us. That night where we were staying in Galilee, I had a dream where I was on the beach again. This time I was with Jesus and his disciples. Jesus was handing out stones with hearts to his disciples and he turned and handed one to me, making me feel a part of his group of friends. I knew this signified the one-on-one -on -one kind of relationship he wants to have with us. It reminded me of a couple of scriptures. John 21 verse 14 to 7 talks about this very spot where Jesus met with his disciples and it says, this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. This is Jesus giving us instructions to love him first, to be humble and remember where we have come from, to know why we love him because we all have a testimony of his goodness to us and our new life because of him. Then second comes our love for who he loves. With patience, taking care of people, being aware of the enemy, protecting people. Jesus' sheep from the enemy scheme, schemes and giving them life-giving words in scripture or feeding his sheep. Two days later we went to an Ice J International Christ, Christian Embassy event in Jerusalem at the Pay Arena in the, in the evening and heard Lou Engel speak. His main message seemed to be around praying your prophecies into being and that there was a birthing of a Nazarite youth movement across the world. He mentioned that he believed something was being birthed right there in Jerusalem that night. My son Dakota had just finished eating two huge American hot dogs and there was an altar call for the youth specifically to come down if they felt called to be a young Nazarite. I turned to him and said, you should probably get down there. And he said, I was already going down. I could see he was inspired and fired up by Lou's message and Holy Spirit had convicted him about it as well. They did a second altar call for others to come down so I went down with him and the other two ladies and my mum came down as well. There were hundreds of us in front of the altar there as Lou and the other others prayed for Holy Spirit to come upon people and to speak to them. All of a sudden my son got hit with the power of the Holy Spirit and he bent over unable to stand up. I held I held my hands up to pray over him and I felt like Hannah as when she released Samuel to the service of the Lord to Eli's, Eli the priest. My son had only just turned 13 in July and this event was on the 12th of October, three days into Sukkot for Hebrew year 5783 which began on Sunday 9th of October 2022. In 1 Samuel 1 verse 27 to 28 it talks about Hannah's prayer. She said, for this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. While Hannah physically gave her son to ministry, I was simply releasing my son and his future into the Lord's hands. 
I said, God, I surrender Dakota to you. I release him into your hands. I knew my son was now of an age where his decisions are going to shape his future and God can protect him, lead him, and Holy Spirit can guide him better than I ever could. This was a spiritual transfer of the weight of responsibility to raise my son from me to God. I knew that my son being baptized at the Jordan, being in Israel, and being at this event for this message, it was all divine timing and I choose to trust God with my son from now on completely. That night back at our hotel room, Dakota told me that God had spoken to him at the event and told him to fast for three days. Then on the third day to pray for things. I knew at that moment that was why he'd eaten those two huge hot dogs. God was preparing him for the fast. I asked him the next two days if he wanted food and he refused. He was so convicted that even though this was the first time he'd ever fasted, He'd watched me fast, but never fasted himself. He was incredibly steadfast and focused like I'd never seen him before. He barely drank water the next day, and we walked over five kilometers around Jerusalem. He also carried a big flag the whole time as well. One of the days of the fast, Dakota told me he asked God if he could have some Oreo Thin Biscuits. Apparently God said he could have two, and when he went to pick up the packet, he bumped it instead of picking it up, and two fell out. It was wild. Two days later and into Dakota's second full day of his fast, we went to a prayer day by Ice J in Jerusalem at the pavilion. Dakota was feeling exhausted and curled up on a couch upstairs after the first session ended in the morning. I had just gone to the bathroom and was walking back up the steps to see where he was and saw a bunch of people around him. A lady marched over to him from Zimbabwe all fired up with the Holy Spirit and prayed the full armour of God over Dakota. I walked up and agreed in prayer as she prophesied powerfully and spoke life over him. She didn't know I was his mum and when she had finished I stepped in and Holy Spirit took over. I started prophesying and declaring victory over him and his life. After we finished praying Dakota sat up and he was revived again. We watched as life flooded back into his eyes and colour came back into his cheeks. He received supernatural strength. And we all praised God for the miracle working power of Holy Spirit in him. The lady turned to me and said something like, wow, that was powerful. Somebody told her I was Dakota's mum and we all had another God moment where Holy Spirit came in a wave and we were all filled to overflow with his glory. Half of us hobbled down the steps and around the corner to a little coffee shop called Yolo Bakery. Looking like we'd had too much to drink, but no, we were just wrecked by Holy Spirit moving in power in and around us. We all had a coffee and Dakota had a hot chocolate before carrying on our day. The next day was Dakota's third day and break of his fast. It also happened to be the day we would be visiting the garden tomb in Jerusalem. The week before I'd been walking through the market stalls in the old city and the Lord spoke to me, telling me to buy a white dress there. I bought the dress not knowing why he told me to buy it, but trusting him because he told me he would tell me when he wanted me to wear it. That morning he told me to wear the white dress, and this is it that I'm wearing today. It's a beautiful flowing white dress with blue embroidery at the top. I thought he must be wanting me to wear it because he is alive and not dead. So instead of wearing black like at a funeral, it would make sense that it must be white to signify life. We arrived at the garden tomb mid-morning and were given a little olive wood, wood communion cup and a cup with juice and a cracker for taking communion with other groups from the Ice J tour. As we walked through the garden area, I saw scriptures I knew well. The first one I saw was John 11 verse 25 which says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. The next one I saw, which hit my heart, was just by the tomb area and one that the Lord had been speaking to me all week. It was Mark 16 verse 6, which talks about an angel speaking to three women who were visiting Jesus' tomb to anoint his body. It says, But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. I also saw a metal sign with writing that was hard to read at first. It was a scripture I didn't know so well. It was propped up on a stone step in an area to the right of the tomb area with a mess to the right with piles of broken stone, a rubbish bin and a concrete mixer. Given the mess, I was slightly confused by the sign but wondered if they'd put it there on purpose. 
the verse was 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. God is not a God of disorder but of order. It was followed below by a second separate verse written and both were written in pen or vivid marker. The second was a reference to Genesis 1 verse 27 and said, Man is created in God's image. The original verse says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. After walking around the garden area briefly, we were asked to be seated for a worship session, which was beautiful. I shut my eyes during the songs and I saw a vision of Jesus' feet walking around us. For the first time, I didn't see his skin colour as white or light brown as I usually see. This time, his feet were dark olive and it made a lot more sense. I watched as his leather sandals moved as he walked and the tassels of a prayer shawl or the tzitzits were moving around his feet. I had a Google because I hadn't seen a vision of Jesus wearing this before. From what I found, the tzitzit demonstrated that the wearer was more than a commoner. He was a noble or a royal personage. While the colour symbolised royalty, the fabric of the fringed garment stood for priestly holiness. The tzitzit was a re physical reminder to the Israelites of who they were, who God was, and what he required of them. Jesus himself wore a garment with tzitzit. Sick people touched the hem of Jesus' garment, that is, the tassels themselves. Matthew 9 verse 20 to 21 says, And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood, or the woman with the issue of blood, for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. And we know from the Bible that she was healed. Matthew 9 verse 22 says, But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. I had my eyes shut still when I felt Jesus walk up close to me. He whispered to my heart, you are wearing white because you have been through your tribulation. You are the bride of Christ. Soon after this, we took communion right there in front of the open tomb where Jesus was resurrected. Until that moment, I'd felt like the messy garden area, the person with a messy past. But Jesus was here telling me, my past is over. The tribulation I'd been through was over. And he was bringing order by speaking the truth to my heart. That he was resurrected and he has also resurrected me. I know he wants you to know this truth too. You are the bride of Christ. Revelation 7 verse 13 to 14 says, Then one of the elders answered saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who came who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. A few verses later, Revelation 7 verse 16 to 17 says, They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who was in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to fountains of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I had personally battled seven years of crippling rheumatoid arthritis, but after my trip to Israel and many personal revelations the Lord led me to, I can say that he has wiped the tears from my eyes. He has washed me with his blood and with his word, and he has led me to fountains of living water, to him and the truth that set me free. The truth that by his stripes I am free, that I am the bride of Christ, and I have been through my tribulation. I get to share the miraculous healing healing I have received from him, from the Lord, to give you hope and a testimony of the goodness of God in my life, for his glory. I no longer have arthritis, swelling in my knees, ankles, hips and wrists that I had before I went to Israel and even during my time there. From the day I got back, the Lord healed me more and more every day. I didn't get the sudden healing that some people have. But he has loved me into wholeness day by day. I have a tiny bit of swelling in my fingers. Maybe just one finger now. Since writing this. Um, but Jesus is my healer. And I know Holy Spirit is manifesting healing in my body right now. He is making me whole. 
I want to encourage you if you have battled with sickness or disease in your body for a long time like I did, or even a short time, it is God's will that you are made whole. It is God's will that you are completely healed and resurrected. The resurrection power that is in me, that is salvation, the Holy Spirit, also lives in every believer of Jesus who has been baptized in the Spirit of the living God. That same Spirit gives life to my body and can give life to yours. Like Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. It is our job to stand on the Word and speak life, to simply believe by faith and thank God for healing us, to grab a hold of those Sits it like that woman did to grab a hold of his word. Thank you, Jesus, for resurrection power living in us and that you are planting seeds of faith into everyone who heals, hears this to see their own bodies made whole and those who they are praying for. For your glory, God, you are faithful, you are a promise keeper and your word does not return void. I want to share something special to close. The next day was our final day in Israel and we travelled to the Israel and Gaza Strip border. On the bus ride that morning, my son Dakota had a word for the people in our tour bus and as others were sharing stories, he wanted to get on the microphone and share what he felt the Lord was saying. I'm going to share what he said in the prayer he spoke over us. I was going to speak it out myself, but then I remembered I have a video on it, so I'm going to pop this next. This video is a testimony of the power of our risen King to do quick works to do powerful work in people, in us, in young people, and to shine his light so the whole world knows him. Acts 2 verse 17 to 18 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Bless you, and I pray that this next video blesses you too. We have we have Dakota Mead with us, who's 13 years old, and we're so happy he's been able to join us, and he would like to give a testimony. Right, so the first thing I got was a word. I got safe and fast travels for everyone. Now, I'll explain that after, but I'll say my other things before that. Okay, so I got my second thing as being a scripture. First Kings chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. That scripture says, Now King David was old and well, along in years. And though they covered him with blankets, he could not keep warm. Therefore his servants said to him, Let a young woman... A virgin be sought out for our Lord the King and let her stand before the King and let her care for him and let her lie with you that our Lord King may be swarm be warm so they sought for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel and found Abashag the, the Shunammite and brought her to the King I don't know how to interpret this, that you can so interpret it how you would like. But just as a guess, I'm going to interpret this as a scripture saying, Comfort my people. I get the comforting like peace for Jerusalem. Now I also got a vision. That's what I call it. I got for everyone on this bus in a line, rushing water, a line above their head engulfing everyone in water so kind of relating to safe travels as he will be protecting everyone when they are going home now i'm going to explain the first word the first word not only means safe and fast travels heading home it also means fast and safe travels when you will be spreading the gospel to find his lost sheep i will always repeat these two words or even quotes that i made these two quotes are if God is not speaking to you, just remember the teacher will not speak during the test unless you are really struggling. 
The second quote is, We all have mountains, and this quote, and in this quote, mountains are challenges. So we all have mountains, and God will let us try and move that mountain ourselves. But if we can't, He lets us learn from it and moves those mountains for us. That was what I got. Now I will pray. Lord, I pray you give safe and fast travels as we fly back home or get home in any some way. I pray in Yeshua that you will protect us as we fetch your lost sheep bed. As we continue our journeys preaching that you will protect us and keep us on the right path. I also pray that everyone on this bus will pray for your country's peace. God's country may have peace in Yeshua, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts with eternal love and joy. Amen. Amen! Lot is God's have just launched him off now. A child shall lead them. Yay! Wow. If you feel like this video has blessed you in any way, feel free to subscribe, share with somebody who you think it might be helpful for, and check out our website in the description below.